What is happening, everyone? Welcome to Mailbag Monday, number 12. Can you believe that? Guys, an interesting fact about the number 12 that many of you may or may not know. The number 12 is often referred to as a dozen. A little food for thought. There's a freebie for you. Guys, if you have questions that you want to have answered, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. And in the subject, do include mailbag monday that way i am sure to maybe hopefully not ignore your email and actually uh, answer it on a future episode of mailbag monday guys let's dive right in this first question is a great one and before we read this i want to mention that this question comes from a retired gunnery sergeant from the united states marine corps and on behalf of the entire k8 mrd radio stuff viewing audience i want to say a ginormous thank you to you good sir for supporting our country and supporting our freedom Ura! <laughs> All right. So he says, sorry to bother you. You are never bothering me, good sir. You of all people are not bothering me. So he asks, when charging a LifePo 4 battery from solar while pulling power from it to power my radio, should the line out from the charge controller go straight to the battery or can it go to a distribution box? What I thought I saw in some setups was a battery line in and charge control line in both going to a power pole distribution box then the line out to the radio, but on other videos, I see people going straight to the battery from the charge controller, then only the battery going to the distribution box. Sounds confusing, I know. I think we're using line in and line out maybe a little loosely. Uh, I had to read this a few times to wrap my head around it, but uh, I think I get the gist. So to answer your question, yes. So I think the best way to answer this question is to give you a rare glimpse inside of my battery box that I have affectionately called Big Geek. So when we look inside Big Geek, you can see that yes, I do indeed have, uh, we'll call it, it's not a power pole distribution block, but it is a distribution block. So the signal chain is as follows. The, the power from the solar panels coming in this top power pole and these two red and black wires are going right here to the, to the solar panel input of the charge controller. From there, they're going from the battery connection to this switch. And the only reason I have this a switch on here is because if a battery is plugged into this without a switch, this always stays on. So from this switch is now this wire right here that's connected to this fuse. So if even if the battery is not hooked up, if I just have a solar panel connected and there's obviously power coming in, this whole thing is energized and this post right here is where the battery uh, positive is connected to so you kind of get two birds stoned at once with this so basically for the way i understand this and i'm not an expert on solar i just build things and if it smokes i do it a different way this method didn't smoke uh, <laughs> so basically the from what i understand the solar energy is coming in through the charge controller, thus energizing my distribution block. If devices connected to this are powered on and they don't need more energy than what my solar panel is putting into this, I'm not going to use any battery power. When the load becomes higher, that's when I'll start pulling uh, power from the battery to augment that. So basically, you're, you're kind of getting a little bit of both. now. Uh, I know BioNO batteries specifically have, you've got a power pole and you have a barrel connector. Both of those are plugged into the, they're soldered to the same exact connection on the BMS inside. But what that allows is just to have two different connections to the battery. All this is doing is bypassing that. So if I just had a regular BioNO battery, you got a barrel connector here and a power pole here. Well, the power pole is going to be your load. The barrel connector is for charging. And they do that separately just I, I really don't know why, but probably just so you don't muck something up. But uh, this is how I wire all of my uh, solar. I always, always, always pull the load from the battery. In fact, BioNO, when you look at the directions for this, it says they do not recommend pulling the load directly from the load on the charge controller. This little light bulb here is the load. So if I wanted to connect something directly to here, I can. But uh, the current output of this is very minimal, where this is basically kind of a safeguard. One, it's all fused, but now I have uh, the ability to pull power from two different sources. And if the draw is less than what uh, is being delivered by the charge controller, all of the excess current is going back into the battery. So 
I hope that answers your question. Sometimes it's a lot easier to see. Uh, I'm not going to show you underneath here because it's a nightmare of wires. But uh, yes, that is how mine is wired. It is totally okay to plug a charge controller into a distribution block. If you have more questions, though, uh, Gunnery Sergeant, please do reach out to me again. So great, great question. I love talking about solar and batteries and stuff. So cool. Thanks for writing in. And thanks for serving our country. You're the best. Next up, we've got a great question on how to handle a pileup. This viewer asks, I want to say thank you for the videos and podcasts you're part of. Makes it nice and helps uh, me grow. My question is, I've been starting to get used to pileup. Well, that's a good thing. What's a good way to help handle them? And I got almost 70 to 80 contacts in one sitting. So how to get more during each sitting? What, you want a pileup that sounds like this? So awesome. That's that's fantastic. You're getting uh, you're getting settled in and used to it. Pileups are uh, a fun experience. That's kind of one of the main reasons I, I enjoy POTUS so much. I just love the pileup. But uh, always remember that, number one, it's about having fun. You are in control. You dictate the, the flow of your activation. Now, myself, I'm not a very patient person. I've, I've always kind of lived fast, as it were. I drive fast. I, I activate fast, uh, all that kind of stuff. So I, I want to just get, you know, get on with it and get on to the next contact and get as many in the log as I can. So I, I talk fast. I type fast. I act fast. Uh, all that kind of stuff. Other guys want to be out there more casually, just kind of taking it easy, and that's fine too. Um, but the reality is when you get that big of a pile up, uh, I would say reward those who are doing things by the book and maybe ignore those who are not. And in that, I mean, when, when I say QRZ, everybody throws their call sign out. And when, when you're really thick into it, I mean, you're, you're just listening for maybe one or two letters or a, or a number, something in there. And, and very often, I'm just throwing back, you know, who's the Kilo 6 call? X-Ray Sierra? You know, because there's just so many people. I'm like, well, I thought I heard a Kilo and I thought I heard a 6, so let's try that. And usually you'll get a Kilo 6 call coming back. Or sometimes, like, for example, I had uh, the other day I was out. And I thought it was like a Kilo Alpha 3. It was actually a Victor Alpha 3. So, you know, ask a couple times. If, if nobody's coming back, you know, I'll just move on. Again, I'm not very patient. Uh, if I say, you know, who's the, who's the Kilo 6 call? I don't hear anything. Who's the Kilo 6 call? I don't hear anything again. I say, well, I guess no one's there. QRZ. Yeah, take it at your own pace. And, and like I said, a lot of times you're just, you're only going to hear a letter, a number, something. Who's the 3 call? You know? And then now you might get a bunch of three calls, but you're still getting way less than, you know, 50 guys throwing their, their call sign all at, out all at once. So you just kind of have to manage it and, and do uh, the best you can with that. As far as uh, getting more during each sitting, well, that's going to come down to a couple factors. One, how fast you can log and how fast you can, uh, you know, e exchange call signs and signal reports and all that. But also what time of day you're out. You know, if you're out probably in the middle of the day where... People might uh, not necessarily be on the radio. It's going to be a bit slower going for you. Uh, maybe early in the morning when, when people are waking up, they might hop on their radio. Uh, but the, the biggest activations that I've typically had lately uh, is I've been going out, say, like around 6 o'clock. Uh, I'm in central time, so it's an hour before the new Zulu day. And the pileups are just insane. And I think a lot of that is because people are at home, you know, people have gotten off work, they've gotten home, they've had a chance to unwind a little bit, whatever. Uh, and it's just a good time to be on the air. But also, because it's only an hour from the new Zulu day, you're going to get a lot of repeat business. And by that, I mean, you're going to get people that are going to work you know, between, for me in Central Time, it's six and seven. And then once seven o'clock hits, it's actually a new Zulu day. So all those people that I just worked in the last hour are gonna come back and work me again because now I'm working, really it's one activation for me, but as far as Parks on the Air is concerned, it's two because I'm working. So I'm filming this on a Thursday. So if I went Thursday at six o'clock, at seven o'clock, as far as Zulu is concerned, it's now Friday. So uh, that garners a lot of pileup uh, activity and a lot of guys like hunting those late shift uh, uh, pod activations because once seven o'clock hits or once zero Zulu hits, 
it's now officially late shift and a lot of guys like to like to work that so a couple things you can uh, put out there and give a shot so thanks for writing in and good luck with your poda activations Next up, we've got another POTA-related activity. Now, why he's asking me this, I don't know, but let's go with it. So uh, this is someone who's asked another question previously, and he says, I have another question for your consideration. I started getting into hunting digital uh, for Parks on the Air and was trying to find more info on activating digital. I found bits and pieces on it, but nothing that really lays out what the criteria is for the QSO. If I recall correctly, digital isn't your wheelhouse. No, it is not. Uh, but was hoping you could shed some light on the topic. So other than being out in nature and doing something uh, that I perceive as incredibly boring, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it. No, I'm teasing. Uh, there's, the digital is very, very popular. And there's a lot of guys that do digital poda. Um, but it's really, so I don't do it personally. I, I, I do genuinely think that it's incredibly boring, but that's just me. So there's no difference whatsoever. You're making a contact. If you see the, the guys that are doing FT8 POTA, you can actually fit like CQ POTA, K to MRD in the little 15 second thing and, and that's all you need to do. You don't have to even say that. You don't at any point in a POTA activation, do you ever actually need to say you're doing a parks on the air. All you need to do is make 10 contacts, simplex, no repeaters other than space stations. That is it. It is so incredibly easy. I mean, the rules are kind of that loose. If you make 10 digital QSOs, you just activated the park. It is that simple. So yeah, uh, that's it. <laughs> that was an easy one. Good question though. Thanks for writing in. <laughs> the next question is about everyone's favorite portable logging software, Hammers. Yes, that's right, Hammers. Hi, Mike Hope, all is well, everything is wonderful. Thank you, I enjoy all of the videos. They've really inspired me to dig deeper into ham radio and POTA. That is the goal. My question about hammers, how well does it work offline? It works fantastic. I'm planning a houseboat trip in Minnesota and we're staying in Voyagers National Park. I know hammers uses QRZ for lookups and just want to make sure it will still log contacts offline as we will have zero service. I already have a GPS dongle so I can maintain the correct time. So here's the deal with hammers. And I've gotten this question uh, worded differently, but I've, I've gotten this question a few times. Hammers needs an internet connection to pull the, uh, the person you're working's information so it populates their name and everything, okay? You do not need at all an internet connection to use Hammers. You get the nicety of having their information. So if you typed in K at MRD, you'd say, hey, there's Mike. I have a name to put with a call sign. That's the only reason. And you know, it pulls the geographic location so you can see it on the map and that looks cool. But aside from uh, all of that stuff, using hammers offline is really no different than using a computer offline or a pen and paper. You'll, you're still able to log QSOs just the same. Uh, it just won't have their information in it. Now, when you get back to civilization, you have information, you can download all their stuff, hit the gear and hit look up and all that if you choose so, uh, or you can just export the log. Uh, directly to your logging software or email it to the POTA admins, whatever. It's no different. So yes, 100%. Now you can't download, to my knowledge, a database like you can on some of the other software. You're just gonna be flying blind and you have, uh, you have their, their uh, call sign and signal report and that's it, that's all you need. As far as time, uh, I've not found my iPhone to go off time. I don't really, I wouldn't worry about a GPS dongle. I think the, you know, this isn't NASA. We're not trying to do things by the nanosecond. I wouldn't worry about time at all. Your, your phone's gonna do a good enough job of that. Um, unless you're thinking FT8 or something, but I don't know uh, why you'd need hammers and a phone and FT8 all connected at once. So yeah, just, just go out and do it. Don't worry about the internet at all. You're not gonna get their names and all that stuff, but so what? Who cares? That's isn't that kind of the point of going out in the middle of nowhere where you don't have uh, cell signal? Any I love, I love when I don't get a cell signal. It's the best feeling in the world. <laughs> Turn on your radio and enjoy the S zero noise floor, and don't worry about it. You'll still make your contact, and you'll still have your log. So, have fun out there, and thanks for writing in. And just like that. Mailbag Monday number 12 comes to a close. Guys, if you want to have your questions answered, email me, k8mrd at icloud.com, and in the subject, put Mailbag Monday, and your email will hopefully not be ignored and will be featured on a future episode of Mailbag Monday. Guys, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe, hit the thumbs up, like, share it, all that kind of crap. 
And until next time, we will see you again on another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.